so students our next question is that is question number 5 okay so question number 5 is chapter 13 sound question number 5 is in order to reduce the loudness of a sound we have to so let me write the question in order to reduce the loudness in order to reduce loudness in order to reduce loudness of sound we have to we have to first one is decrease its frequency of vibration of sound decrease its frequency of vibration decrease its frequency of vibration decrease its frequency of vibration of the sound second one is increase its frequency of vibration of sound increase its frequency of vibration of sound third one is option number third that is decrease its amplitude of vibration of the sound decrease its amplitude its amplitude of vibration of sound and fourth option is increase its amplitude of vibration of sound increase its amplitude of vibration of sound okay so actually in your book the options are taken as a b c and d so i am trying to write in the same way as it is given in your book so let me repeat the question and the four options which are given here the question is in order to reduce loudness of sound we have to now you have to do something uh, among these four so any one of them is correct option because uh, the only one choice is correct here so the first one is decrease its frequency of vibration of the sound then second one is increase its frequency of vibration of the sound c is decrease its amplitude of the vibration of the sound and last one is increase its amplitude of vibration of sound so students if you try to give answer of this question you should recall your memory and try to recall what you have learned about the loudness of the sound and try to relate how sound is related to some other uh, characteristics of wave like frequency amplitude time period etc so you have learned that i hope you uh, you have recall this so you we have learned that the amplitude of the sound sorry the loudness of the sound is directly proportional to what i hope you know yes correct so loudness of the um, uh, loudness of sound is directly proportional to square of the amplitude yes it means if you increase amplitude the loudness of the sound will increase okay so it means if you want to reduce you must reduce the amplitude of the sound okay yes so now check your option and the option that is related to decrease amplitude is absolutely correct so let's see 
this one is related to the frequency, decrease in frequency, it means it is not related to, this frequency is not related to the loudness. So this option cannot be correct. The increase in frequency is again not related to the loudness. Now these two are related to the loudness because they are, they are amplitude. It means either C or D is correct. Now you want to reduce the loudness, it means you must reduce the amplitude. Okay, so it here you can see here decrease its amplitude of vibration. So yes, if amplitude is less, then the loudness is also less. So yes, your answer is correct and that is C. So the C option is correct and that is decrease its amplitude of vibration of sound. Okay, so I hope most of you have solved this question by yourself only. But if there was any confusion, it is now clear. Even, sorry, if kisi ko abhi bhi agar koi problem rahe gai ho, then you can ask this. I am repeating the answer why it is correct. So let me repeat this answer. Actually, we know that the loudness is related to the amplitude. If amplitude is increases, then loudness is also increases and if amplitude is decreases, loudness is decreases. So this is the basic concept behind the answer of this question. So the correct answer of this question is C. Okay. So I hope uh, you have ticked this uh, answer and try to write the explanation in your copy. So you will be able to understand after some days when there, uh, if there will be any confusion. Okay. So let's see the next question that is question number six okay so try to note down this question if you want to note down you can pause okay so let's see the we are now ready to solve the question number six okay so let's see what is sixth question the sixth question is loudness of sound is measured in unit of okay so the question which is given in your book Question number six is loudness of sound is measured. So I am writing the question loudness of sound is measured. So loudness of sound is measured in units of in units of. So this is the question and your options are given here so let's see the four options are the first one is the first option which is given in your book that is decibel okay so decibel it is given so it is symbolically represented by db then second one is hertz the second option which is given in your book is hertz And the third, that is option number C, is given meter. So meter, it is denoted by M and this one is by HZ. And the last, that is D option, is meter per second. Okay, so it is given here meter per second. It is generally denoted by M per second. So the question is loudness of sound is measured in units of this is the question and options are given here first option is decibel this one is decibel decibel then hertz then meter and meter per second so i am sure that most of you have uh, solved this question by yourself and you have completed and the correct option for this question is option number A because we know that the unit in which we measure the loudness of the sound is decibel. Yes, this is the decibel. This is unit of loudness of the sound. Now, uh, let's see other units. So you can see the option B. This is hertz. Hertz is unit of the frequency of vibration. Okay. So this is related to the frequency of vibration. The meter, this meter is the unit of the distance or you can say amplitude. So this one is unit of amplitude and now meter per second. 
everyone know that the unit of meter per second is unit of velocity or speed of any object so yes your correct answer is decibel so the question number 6 you should pick the correct option is decibel so we have done question number 6 now we are going to proceed for the next question that is question number 7 yes this one is also very important and very conceptual question so you must try to solve this question by yourself so let me write the question on the board and then we will try to solve that question students i am continuously advising you that you should try to solve the questions by yourself and try to write the explanations okay if you will be able to write the explanations of the options by yourself it means you have the basic concept and uh, very good uh, ideas about the topics so try to do this it will help you for uh, remember the concept a uh, long interval of time okay so let's see the question number 7 that is the loudness of sound is determined by the so the question number 7 in your book is question number 7 is the loudness of sound is determined by so the question is the loudness loudness of sound is determined determined by okay yes so this is the question this is given in book now i am going to write the options and any one of the option is correct so you should try to check which one is correct so let's see the first option is amplitude of vibrations so first option is amplitude of vibrations okay now the second option for this question is ratio of amplitude and frequency of vibration so ratio of amplitude and frequency of vibrations okay now our third option is frequency of vibration so frequency of vibration and the last that is option number d is product of amplitude and frequency of vibration so it is product product of amplitude and frequency of vibration okay so students now the question is written on this board and you can see this one is on your screen and the question is the loudness of the sound is determined by so if you want to give answer of this question you should recall the uh, concept about the loudness which we have learned in this chapter so if you consider about the loudness you will get that the loudness is directly related to the amplitude of the vibration yes it is not related to the frequency so you can see the option b sorry in option a it is amplitude in option b ratio of amplitude and frequency because the loudness does not related to the frequency so this option cannot be correct c it is frequency of vibration so this one is also cannot be correct and the last option is product of amplitude and frequency of the vibration so if you recall your memory you will you get that the loudness does not depends on the frequency of the vibration and it is only depends upon the amplitude because we know that the loudness is loudness is proportional to square of amplitude so you can write here like this amplitude square so this is the application or you can say explanation sorry so this one is explanation loudness is directly proportional to amplitude but it is not related to the frequency of the vibrations so you can see here for this question option number a is exactly correct so your correct answer is a and i am sure most of you have done this question 
by yourself very good so if not try to understand the explanation and must remember that loudness depends upon the amplitude by the relation that loudness is directly proportional to square of the amplitude if amplitude is increases loudness also increases if amplitude is less loudness will be less so you can see here the loudness of sound is determined by so your correct answer is the amplitude of the vibrations so the loudness is determined by amplitude this is the answer of this question so i hope you must uh, understand uh, how this option number a is correct so this one is the correct answer so you should note it down tick the correct option and note down the explanation of this question sorry this answer so now we are ready to solve the next question that is question number 8 so before i am is going to erase this part you should note down the question or if you have a book you should tick the correct answer and write the explanation of the correct answer okay we are now ready to solve the question number 8 that is question number 8 is 1 hertz is equal to this is the question 1 hertz is equal to and your options are a is equal to sorry first option is 1 vibration per minute 1 vibration per minute this is given option option number b is 10 vibrations per minute so 10 vibrations per minute option number c is 60 vibrations per minute 60 vibrations per minute and the last that is d option is 600 vibrations per minute so you can see 600 vibrations per minute okay so students i am sure that most of you is able to solve this question by yourself and try to do this and also write the explanation of all the questions because it will give you idea of the um, concept behind the question so let us see One hertz is equal to. So let's see what is what the definition of the frequency because this one is the unit of the frequency. So the frequency was defined as you can say is frequency defined as uh, number of vibrations per second. So if ten vibrations per second, it is considered as ten hertz. Twenty vibrations per second means twenty hertz. So one vibration per second means one hertz. Yes. Oh. we got the answer one vibration per second means one hertz but in options do you get any option like that one vibration per second look at this one vibration but per minute no it is not correct then 10 vibration per minute do you think this one is one vibration per second check about this oh no this one is also not correct because this one is something different so let check about the option number a if you check one vibration per minute so you should can write one vibration and at the place of minute you can write 60 second so it is 1 by 60 vibrations per second do you think it is correct no because we need one vibration per second so let's check about b So option B is ten vibrations per minute. So ten vibrations upon sixty seconds. So it is one by six. You can see vibration per second. Okay, it is not correct. Okay, let's see option number C. C is sixty vibrations per minute. So let's check about this one. So 60 vibration per minute. It means 60 vibration upon 60 seconds. 60 upon 60 is one. Yes, this one is one vibration per second. This one. We search about these one vibration per second. 
according to the definition. Since we have done about the three, let's check about the fourth one. What is the result of this one? So let's see. The D it is 600 vibrations per minute means 600 vibrations upon 60 seconds. So it is 10 vibrations per second. Okay. So now you can see in vibrations per second, the option number 1 is 1 by 60, option number B is 1 by 6, option number C is 1 vibration per second, and option D is 10 vibrations per second. Now according to the definition of the uh, hertz, or you can say according to the definition of the frequency, the number of vibrations per second is known as a frequency. If 20 vibrations per second, it means 20 hertz, 10 vibration means per second means 10 hertz, 5 vibration per second means 5 hertz, 2 vibration per second means 2 hertz, so 1 vibration per second means 1 hertz, it means the correct answer is this one is and that is option number C, so option number C is correct answer and the explanation is given here, you can write this one, but you should try to write about all the options, if you not check all the options carefully, Sometimes there will be problem, so you should try to check all the options if MCQ type questions are there. Okay, so I hope you understand why the option C is correct op op option for this question. That is question number eight. Question was one hertz is equal to, and answer is sixty vibration per minute. Or this this means one vibration per second. So you can write either 60 vibration per minute or you can write 1 vibration per second. Yes. So I hope you understand. Now we are ready to uh, solve the next question. So let me write the question number 9. So the question number 9 is So the question number 9 is Which of the sound is determined by So let's check Which of the sound Determined By so this is the question that is given in your book at number 9 and the options for this question are the first one is frequency frequency then second option is speed sorry second option is amplitude so this one is amplitude the third option is the speed and the last option for this question is the loudness so before giving the answer of this question I want to repeat the same sentence that is if you want to find out the correct answer for this question you must recall your knowledge about the pitch what do you know about the pitch how it is related to uh, some different characteristic of wave I am not giving you answer directly so we learn that pitch is related to some uh, some characteristics of the sound wave and that is what that is frequency yes we learn that if frequency is very high then we say that high pitch sound and that must be the shrill sound if frequency is low then pitch is low and the sound is known as the gruff sound yes so uh, we learn about the pitch. We have done this topic when we discussed about the chapter. So if pitch is related to the characteristic of the sound wave that is known as frequency. Okay, so we have learned this one. So if you want to give the correct answer of any question, you must recall your uh, uh, memory and try to understand, try to revise about this. If you uh, don't have idea, Take your book and try to study about this concept of the pitch and you will get that the pitch is related to the frequency 
the frequency is high then sound must have high pitch and the shrill sound if frequency is low then sound is low pitch then gruff sound okay we have also learned that in the most of cases the women have high pitch uh, shrill sound because their frequency are very high and in case of men the frequency is low to so sound is gruff as compared to women in case of the uh, children or small kids sorry kids the pitch is always very high because their frequency is very high and the uh, sound is uh, so you can see here the pitch of sound is determined by the frequency so the correct option for this question is option number a and you can write high frequency measures high pitch or you can say pitch of the sound so students the correct option for this question is option number a now we are ready to solve the next question that is question number 10 so let's see what is question number 10 what is and this is the last mcq question given in your book so now we are ready to solve the question number 10 so in explanation of this question you can write high frequency determines high pitch okay or you can say pitch of the sound is determined by the frequency now we are ready to solve the next question that is question number 10 and the last mcq type so the question that is given in the book is question number 10 is i am going to write the question here question number 10 is ultrasound has frequency of vibration so this is the question ultrasound ultrasound has frequency of vibration has frequency of vibration this is the question vib means vibration we are writing in short here vib it means vibration okay we are talking about vibration you can write here vibration so option number a is between 20 to 20000 hertz so between 20 to 20 hertz to 20000 hertz this is the question sorry this way option number a then option b is below 20 hertz so this one is below 20 hertz option c above 20000 hertz above 20000 hertz and the last option for this question that is question number 10 is between 500 to 10000 hertz so this one is between 500 hertz to 10000 hertz okay so students the question number 10 is ultrasound has frequency of vibration first option is between 20 hertz to 20000 hertz second one is below 20 hertz third one is above 20000 hertz and fourth one is between 500 hertz to 10000 hertz okay so yes now i am sure most of you have done this question by yourself because we have learned about the three types of uh, waves first one was the infrasound then second one is audible sound waves and last one is ultrasound waves and we have study about these topics in detail and there we have discussed about the frequency of these three types of waves and their ranges okay so yes we know that the frequency range from 20 hertz to 20000 hertz is known as the audible frequency or you can say audible sound waves 
then below 20 hertz it is infrasound above 20000 hertz is your answer that is ultrasound and between 5 500 sorry 500 hertz to 10 100 hertz there is no specific range but it is also in between the audible range you can say it is greater than the 20 hertz and less than the 20000 so these two are the audible sound waves and the option b is infrasound and the answer of this question is option number c that is above 20000 hertz so this one is the correct answer because you know that the ultrasound are the sound which have a frequency more than 20000 hertz so we know that we cannot hear the sound less than 20 hertz and more than 20000 hertz if if sound has frequency less than 20 hertz it means it is a uh, very low frequency and known as infrasound waves and frequency more than 20000 hertz are very high frequency uh, and our ear cannot determine these, uh, these high frequency so we are unable to hear and these type of frequency waves are known as ultrasound waves so the correct option for this question is the option number C that is more than or you can say above 20,000 hertz okay so I am sure you and uh, you get the point of this question and most of you have done this question before I am giving the answer so yes if you are studying you will be definitely able to solve the questions which are given in the chapter because but students try to write the explanation by yourself because if you will be able to write the explanation it means you know most basic concept behind the questions okay so yes you did very well and you write this question sorry answer of this question if someone is unable to write or unable to choose the correct option you can discuss us with the discuss with us in online classes or you can contact on the given number okay